Welcome to your final chapter, chapter 22, Humans and the Environment. You have made it to the very end of the textbook. Congratulations. It has taken a while. Um, and I am excited to just get into discussing everything really about agriculture, food production, habitat destruction, pollution, and, and ways of conservation. Now, I do encourage you to come to your PDF of your textbook online, read section 21, or excuse me, 22.1, how we can increase food production. Um, ultimately, this is about all the different ways that us typically here in America have unique ways of increasing food production through all of our different um, industrial resources. But it also looks at different countries that don't have access to those, some of the negative impacts of intensive livestock production. And then we can look at world food supplies because most countries do depend on America for different food sources. Now, we also depend on other countries for things. You can um, see that in the way that we are uh, running low for, let's just say, during this unique time of the coronavirus, we have ran low on personal protective equipment because most of that is produced out of China, which in a situation of a world pandemic, each country is pretty much on their own themselves. 22.2 um, is habitat destruction. Um, you need to come back and just read through the main uh, main form of habitat destruction is something called deforestation because we mainly stay here um, on terrestrial grounds and this is just obviously what it states when forests are destroyed for whatever reason if it's um, if it's using the trees for uh, just taking the trees down to use them for paper or wood products. Um, we have to ultimately have enough of our forests in place to create oxygen for us. Um, so it, it is something just to keep in mind as we are trying to sustain our uh, planet and have enough available oxygen, we have to keep an eye on deforestation. 22.3 is covers pollution. You cover greenhouse gases, ultimately. This is where we have too much carbon dioxide uh, produced in our atmosphere, and we call this the greenhouse effect. There's a unique little figure there for you to go back and read through. Um, and then we get to acid rain. So this is when you have different, um, think about countries where there's, an, and I say countries because America has something called the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, that really limits what industries are able to burn and put into the air, which would be toxic chemicals that can leave, you know, wherever they're being produced um, in a gaseous form. But a lot of countries do not have protection agencies in place by their government. So acid rain is um, is a factor that ultimately is very harmful for people, very harmful for the soil, and very harmful for plants or anything growing because the rain that falls to the ground picks up the uh, toxic waste in the air and then brings them back down to earth as the rain falls. Okay, now the final, um, final aspect that we really need to, to sit in on for this unit is something called eutrophication. It's a fun big word. Ultimately, this is where um, organisms that typically grow um, in, let's, let's think about a lake, a river, a pond, any water source where there is a symbiotic relationship where the fish are living, where the plant life are, are living, and they're all absorbing the nutrients that they need. Let's take that fish in particular. It needs to, through, through, um, having that water move through its gills, absorb the oxygen so it has energy to move and sustain life and be able to hunt its food. Now, when we have eutrophication occurring, what this is is where um, the oxygen that is dissolved into that water is being used up because bacteria that's inside that lake is ultimately receiving an over an abundant source of the nutrient nitrogen as well as phosphates, but mostly nitrogen. So if you look at this figure right here, because this is the most helpful one, we can have our water sources get too much nitrogen or too many phosphates from um, runoff of fertilizers that are not being absorbed by plants. So think about the farmer who's using a um, nitrogen-based fertilizer. If those plants growing are not absorbing all of the nitrogen that is being 
being placed on them from this outside fertilizer. Ultimately, that nitrogen, as the as rain starts falling, is going to find its way into a water source. Um, other types of uh, ways that this nitrogen can get into water sources is also from what we um, what we refer to as slurry or animal waste. Okay, so slurry is another term or a sludge or silage right here is another term that you may see in this unit. So any type of animal waste that's finding its way into a water source can put too much nitrogen into the water. That's going to cause the growth of too much bacteria um, to overgrow. And as that bacteria overgrows, they take up all of the oxygen in the water. As they take up all the oxygen in the water, the aquatic life that survives off that oxygen is going to ultimately not be able to live. I have another image here just from Google Images. Um, so if you just Google search for images, eutrophication, you're going to get images like this over here. Uh, living in Louisiana for a few years, it was never um, too hard to find a swampy area where you could see um, this type of looking, you know, murky area. This is a great example of eutrophication. So I don't know for any of y'all that go to Pickwick often, if you've ever seen this happen around some of the banks, um, this is ultimately where there's too much nitrogen in the water. That bacteria is taking away all the oxygen, causing ultimately a buildup of the different algaes um, that form a blanket over the water, therefore blocking the sunlight coming in, not allowing the aquatic life to, to grow at the bottom of this water source, which is creating oxygen for the fish. So it's a definitely a problem in your water sources that we have to be able to take care of and see. Um, and then ultimately, as we look through this unit, um, we can look at conservation. And we will come back to this table when we look at your assignment for this unit. But what I really wanted to show you was the final aspect that I've seen on some of the past tests to make sure you understand how we treat sewage. Because sewage and fertilizer runoff are the two main um, issues and causes of eutrophication in our water system. So there is a way that we treat sewage. So when you go to the potty and you flush your um, flush your excrement down the toilet in Corinth, Mississippi, we have water treatment facilities that do what you are seeing in this figure 22.31 here. It is where um, ultimately the raw sewage enters the solid waste sink and are sent to the anaerobic digester. Right here, there's no air in here, so any bacteria needing air, they are killed. And the anaerobic bacteria feed on the organic matter. Methane gas is produced, and that can actually be used as a fuel, so it can be um, taken out and used as a fuel. And then the remaining sludge can actually be used as a fertilizer. And then up here, the aeration tank allows the microorganisms to grow and feed on the organic matter. And then you have your final secondary settlement tank where microorganisms sink. The sludge at the bottom is called the active sludge, and it is returned to the aeration tank, which um, ultimately they, they just cycle out until all the microorganisms can feed on that organic matter until it is completely taken out. So the um, ultimately what we are creating when we are cleaning out our water is a sludge that does not have any of that active bacteria in it that can make anyone sick or that can get into our water systems to cause that eutrophication. Um, ultimately, the end result of the water that's clean is what the, the term that Cambridge gives it is effluent. The liquid is completely clear, does not smell, has no pathogenic organisms in it, and it can be slavely released into rivers and the sea. Um, so this is the unique way that our water is cleaned just like here in Corinth, Mississippi. And um, I would suggest coming back and reading all the different sustainable developments and the way that we conserve different um, forms of food like fish stocks, um, how we look at conserving endangered species. Uh, and we're going to look at a neat activity to cover some of this information. But this is Unit 22, and I cannot wait. Um, I really just can't wait to see you guys when we get to see each other again.